the funny thing, obviously, from the back of this has definitely been the response from Chris. Because allegedly, everyone's saying now that this episode of Golden Hour was filmed around the same time that the article dropped. I'm not too sure if that's true, but I want this to be true. But most likely what happened, um, journalistic standards dictate that when someone puts together a piece like some that he put together on Rolling Stones, they usually reach out to you and say, hey, do you want to add comment? Because these people are saying this about, and you can decide to not. And most of the article, he didn't respond to the comment. So this could be true. But I'm also pretty certain he knew the article was coming out. I don't think it was the first time he saw it, it was on his phone. He definitely knew it was coming out. So he had a knowledge of it. But maybe just the stark reality of like getting all these messages from his family and friends and wife and shit is what he reacted the way he did. So this is episode number what? I don't know. Episode number 24 of Good Golden Hour and Chris Celia in the corner here. Just watch his face as he kind of checks his phone a million times because clearly something happened and he got some sort of message that wasn't great. Oh, God. Or <laughs> fat dude's ass. Uh, what do you got, Nick? Ew. <laughs> It changed the whole entire time is really trying hard, super, super hard to just carry on and be funny. Like he's trying to help his friend out. It's like, brother, like this is not the time. It's not the place. Just do your jokes. But he's like trying to get Chris involved, looking over at him and shit. And, you know, it's a podcast. You don't, you're not meant to be checking your phone as much as these guys are on there. But I don't think they actually enjoy being on this show. These guys, I think they just do it for the money, clearly. Um, they kind of want to be anywhere else but that. But the constant checking on the phone should be a bit of a red flag that, you know, you're not engaged. But yeah, it's just funny. Just keep watching, Chris. I want you to stop. Everybody was like, you I know want what you mean? to stop. We were all eating Lizzo out, and then he <laughs> had to go to. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden, you had to make it fucking weird. <laughs> Golden hour, you know, rocking that life of ribs. Look, dude. Yes, I'll get his attention. <laughs> look at the face as Brendan taps into look at the screen. He knows it's going dark. Look at his face. Hell yeah. Bite club. The fake enthusiasm. But Eric Griffin. <laughs> the eyebrow raise. Since the beginning. <laughs> or beginning of me. But anyway, um, I have a debate club for you guys. <laughs> Adults. The eyes like scanning Disney. the room. Look at it. Checking the phone again. Asterisk. <laughs> and don't have Staring children. at it. Pedophiles. I have been a Disney person. Well, you probably don't want to say that around Chris Lear, really, do you? I think that's why he immediately started chewing the side of his cheek. Brendan, come on. He's so redacted, isn't it? Probably don't want to, you know, use those words around Chris. Been since <laughs> I can remember. I'm going to take that back. And uh, have annual passes. Don't have kids. But have that. Oh, I love those. In my office. From so, a haunted mansion. Debate club. I mean, being like a Star Wars collector is Still a similar type of thing. I mean, you're a loser. You know, you go to Disneyland, you go to Disneyland. I mean, I get it. No, bitch. And, you know, he's on his phone a lot on this show. But if you scan across the entire episode, you'll see he touches his phone way more than he did previously. So this for sure was the time that he was getting pinged. Can you imagine the texts you're getting through on your phone at the same time this is happening and shit? He's probably frantically texting the girls as well who are in the articles. What the fuck are you doing? You betrayed me. Go film yourself jacking off right now. You know, all that sort of nonsense. Absolute creepo, bro. I'm there with my kids. She's clogging up all the rides and these bitches. No kids. It's for the kids, man. Is it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> have, you, have you gone to a music park with Calvin? Yeah, we, we, we went to <laughs> Disneyland. Um. <laughs> Again, there's not much that can come. There's not much to give victims this. What's that word called? Um, comfort, right? That's what sometimes I think to myself. Council culture can sometimes work because if you can't get justice in the courts, at least you can make the person publicly. You can publicly humiliate them, and you can make them squirm, right? You can make you can fuck up their day. That's that's like a weird type of gratification it's not going to do much really especially if you you know suffered how these people are saying they suffered but if there's some level of gratification you can get from this is knowing that this day was fucking hell for this man do you know what i mean he was really going through it like really look at his face here like twitch all over the place like okay. meth addicts you, have you gone to an amusement park with yeah we, we we went to disneyland um, 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 um and did he like the did he like the roller coaster yeah and <laughs> 
and oh, that must be small crazy. For, no, he, he doesn't do the roller coaster. He 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 liked the little ones, you know, the oh, right, fast right. ones. But the little ones, yeah, the tomato. He gets like them a little scared, things. a little scared, but he just kind of. Yeah, you know what I mean? he's thinking, you know. Oh, yeah, I, I fucked up. I, I know he's thinking, shit, my dad's a pedo. This night, you just remind <laughs> me. I let my son. He was like, Dad, I, he likes shark movies. Uh, I was like, have you ever seen 47 meters down? He's like, no. I'm like, yeah, but we don't care about uh, no. Disneyland right there. Disneyland? Uh, Smith Ford. Down with them. Look at the car's roller coaster's lit. <laughs> okay. That's the that's the screenshot I need. That's what I need. I fucking need that screenshot. Fuck that. Let's improve the quality a little bit. I need that screenshot. Fucking hell. That face. Holy shit. He looks like a fucking cat. Or like a fox or something. Like a fucking pedo fox. Let's see this. Let's, let's get this up on here. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, so they've changed it all. So I'm, I'm done with them. Look at those. The car's roller coaster's lit. Man makes Carlo Ancelotti look like a fucking stud. No, no. We need to get we need to get hold of that. We need to get hold of that. Let's get one closer in as well. <laughs> look at his face. Look at Brendan. Oh, shit. Patreon's about to get hit. Mill tickets done. Fuck. Won't be able to make the payments on the Porsche anymore. Fuck. Might have to give back the Ferrari. Fuck. Might have to downsize again. Shit. Because let it be known. This is the main reason why he latched onto fucking Chris Lee, which is smart for him, business point of view. Shitty thing to do, but business point of view, Brennan made the right choice. He jumped onto Chris, became his best friend, right? And he's been on him since especially since Theo's left he needed somebody to kind of replace because no one does Theo numbers anymore There's, there was a period in time where Theo would you know come do you remember there was a period of time when Theo was on King and Sting he'd jump in here and there and do like a guest appearance and his episodes would get, be like the only ones that got like 100 fans of views because Theo fans would just watch anything that Theo does and whatnot and he's obviously got a big huge fan base but Chris Alia, for some period of time before the allegations he had the similar effect He'd come on the front and the kid, boom, the views will go up. But ever since those allegations hit, it's been a wrap. It's been a wrap. And Brendan is there. That's the face of somebody looking at their meal ticket, looking at their fucking cash cow, going through it and thinking, fuck, this is going to be a bit of a problem, isn't it? And this is Chris thinking, my future's on the line. So I love the contrast here. One person's thinking this is the end of my career, legitimately. Any kind of second wind I was having recovering from allegations is gone. And I'm definitely not going to go to fucking, I'm definitely not going to be able to perform the comedy mothership anytime soon. And this is him just thinking, shit, I'm going to have to like hold off on the exhaust install. I'm going to have to hold off on getting the fucking Bugatti. <laughs> That's the only thing he's thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> shit <laughs> I have to start slinging some more tiger fic dude there's this movie <laughs> that Disney has out Rachel wanted to watch Peter Pan and Wendy mm -hmm. like, it's so funny dude so it's, yeah, yeah. it starts with this mid century white family mm -hmm. and then you're like oh okay Disney it's like you're going old school mm -hmm. cause the whole family's white anyway we don't care Eric's talking shit but yeah look it's not real, you know, it's not much payback. It's not much justice, really. I'm sure most of these victims want the guy to be under a prison or something, but at least you got him, to, at least you got to see him squirm a little bit and have that fucking weird contorted face. 